The first thing you see when you open Spacio is the dashboard. This is where your projects are located, as well as your teams, user settings, and tutorials. You can sort projects in different ways. Search for project names, and see their locations on a map by clicking on the map icon. In Spacio, each project can have multiple variations, which we call sketches. So if a project has multiple sketches, you can check them out by clicking Explore Sketches. Here you can also compare different sketches to see what the differences are. To create a new project, simply click on the Add New Project button. Then give your project a fitting name. You can always change this later. You'll then be brought to a map where you'll be setting your project location. This is an important step in order to get the right sun position for future simulations. You can also input coordinates and choose a coordinate system. You'll also get the option to import context. This imports buildings, streets, satellite and map data, etc. into your project, which is very useful for real life projects. Now that we have a project started, let's quickly go over the UI. Starting in the top left corner, we have the Spacio logo, which is where you go back to the dashboard, join the Slack community, or sign out. The project name and sketch name, and the pin bar, which is empty for now, but will display pinned metrics. In the top right corner, we have a status icon for whether your latest change has been saved, undo and redo buttons, as well as an import and export button, which we'll talk more about later. On the left, we have sketches, statistics, spaces, and elements, which is coming soon, as well as the simulations button, which houses all of the simulations Spacio has at the moment. On the right, we have a 2D, 3D toggle, fit to camera, which zooms into what you have selected, turntable, sun position, which is purely visual, a snapping toggle, view layers, which let you toggle different layers of your project, like for example hiding context, level of detail, which lets you increase or decrease the level of detail in your project, display modes, for working with categories, tags, etc., terrain modes, which helps you visualize, for example, sloping in your terrain, or the ability to see satellite imagery or a standard map layout and some view layer shortcuts for exterior, interior, and underground view. I'll showcase the display modes and view layer shortcuts once we have some buildings in the project. In the bottom left corner is where you'll find the properties panel, which we'll talk more about later. And finally at the bottom is where you'll find the different tools for creating plots, buildings, context, vegetation, terrain, and distance. Let's start by creating a plot. First I'll toggle 2D view and then I'll change the terrain mode to map. I'll select the plot tool, and then choose the freeform mode. Then I'll click in the shape that I want my plot to be. When I'm satisfied, I let enter to finish the shape. Then I'll toggle back to 3D view. If I click on the plot now, I'll get two new toolbars. A black one on top, and a white one on the bottom. The black toolbar has actions such as hiding the plot, moving, copying, rotating, mirroring, and deleting, while the white toolbar gives you the ability to generate buildings and parking, making surface parking, resetting setbacks, and cleaning the plot. Both toolbars will have different actions depending on what you have selected. Now let's try the building tool. Let's stick with rectangle mode and click on the plot to set our starting point. Now when you move your mouse, you'll see a rectangle being drawn, and if you hold down shift, you'll make a square instead. When you're satisfied with the shape, click again or hit enter. Now you'll be able to choose how many stories you want your building to be. You can either drag your mouse, or hit the tab key to enter a specific height or amount of stories. When you're satisfied, hit enter. The tab trick will always work when the blue box is on screen. Now that we have a building, we can edit it further by clicking on it. And then for example grabbing an edge and moving it. Dragging a face, adding a fillet, etc. When editing buildings, you'll see another white toolbar at the bottom of your screen, 
this will give you some useful information on keys you can press to achieve different results, like for example hitting Alt when dragging a face to split it. You can also cut your building into different parts using the scissor tool in the black toolbar. This allows you to have, for example, multiple heights on the same building. Instead of manually creating buildings, you can also generate buildings. Let's click on the plot and then clean it. Then we'll generate some buildings by clicking the building icon in the white toolbar. Here you can change the generation style between courtyard and lamella, with more styles coming soon. You can also change the target density and openness with these two sliders. For more settings, you can open the settings menu and adjust different parameters, like for example minimal parcel area. If you find a generation you like, but you still want to experiment, you can save the design and come back to it later. Generated buildings are also fully editable, so they're a great starting point for a project. Let's move on to the context tool, which works similarly to the building tool. I'll click on the context tool, choose rectangle mode, and then do exactly like I did with the building tool. Context is also fully editable. You can even convert it to a building if you want. This works the other way too, so you can make an existing building into context if you want to. Moving on to the vegetation tool. The vegetation tool lets you place down trees, either individually or in an array, as well as creating parks. Parks can be added as land use in the view simulation. So let's place down some parks. Moving on to the terrain editor. The terrain editor lets you modify the terrain by drawing a terrain curve, and then moving the points on the curve. If you switch to the cut and fill terrain mode, you'll be able to see where the terrain needs to be cut or filled with ease. You can also change how buildings interact with the terrain by clicking on a plot or building you want to change, heading into the properties panel, going to the terrain panel, and then changing the terrain interaction mode. And lastly, the Distance tool, which lets you measure distances or areas. Now that we have some buildings and parks set up, let's look at the Statistics panel. In the Statistics panel, you'll find lots of useful metrics that'll update alongside any edits you make in your project. There are six different tabs with information relevant to the tab's title. If you're unsure what a metric means, you can hover over it to get a handy tooltip about the metric. You'll also have the ability to pin metrics to the top of your screen, so you don't have to keep the statistics panel open to keep an eye on certain metrics. These will also update alongside any changes you make in your project. Some metrics will have a small gray arrow next to them. These are expandable metrics. Once you expand a metric, you'll have different filtering options. For example, under GFA you'll find filters for category, tag, and light and dark. Some expanded metrics in the statistics panel will let you change Spacio's display mode as well. This is indicated by the monitor icon that appears when hovering over a filter. By clicking the monitor icon on category, it'll change the display mode to category. Now that we're in the category display mode, we'll have the ability to change different categories of plots, buildings, and stories. Simply click on either one, and change the category on top. You can also see that changing the categories update the filter in the statistics panel as well. Now let's talk about the Properties panel in Spacio. 
The properties panel lets you change a ton of things in Spacio, like plot setback, building access type, aperture size, and so on. Spacio works like a data tree. This means that some things have a higher specificity than others. To demonstrate, I'll first have the project selected. You can see our selection in the bottom left corner or at the top of the properties panel. Then I'll change the roof type to gable. As you can see, all the roofs have changed to the gable style roof. However, if I now click on a building and change its roof type to green, you'll see that only that building changes. This is because the building has a higher specificity than the project. If we change the project roof type again, you can see that the green roof still remains. We can clear the overridden roof type by hitting the reset downstream button. Now the green roof building will be back to being controlled by the project instead. Moving on to simulations. Spacio currently has three different simulations. Sun hours, daylight potential, and views. There will be more simulations coming soon. Let's start with sun hours. The sun hour simulation calculates how much direct daylight, outdoor areas, or building facades get. You have the ability to both include and exclude objects, as well as setting the simulation date and threshold. The results will show up both as a graph in the simulation window and as a gradient map in the 3D view. The date and threshold compliance is different depending on where you are in the world, but in this case, it's the 1st of May between 12 and 8 o'clock, with at least 3 hours of direct sunlight on 50% of the plot. In this case, we don't have enough sun hours, so we'll need to make some changes to our project. Thankfully, the simulations update alongside any changes you make in your project, so it's super easy to see if your change made a positive or negative impact. You can also change between different preview modes or increase the grid resolution. Let's move on to daylight potential. The daylight potential simulation computes how much of the sky dome is visible on the building facades. This directly correlates to how much light rooms in your building will get. You can switch between the different preview modes and see all the results, only the good ones, medium, or dark ones. With medium and dark results, you might have poor indoor daylight if a room is on the deeper side. Just like sun hours, the simulation will update alongside any changes you make in your project. You also have the ability to add context to the simulation to see how your project might affect surrounding buildings. And lastly, the view simulation. The view simulation has three different modes, generic, land use, and sensor. Generic mode will calculate the general view quality of your buildings. The land use mode lets you select parks as points of interest, and will calculate a score based on how good the view is to the land uses you have selected. And finally, sensor mode. The sensor mode lets you set a point of interest, like for example the opera house here. Then it will calculate a score based on how good the view is to the sensors you placed. You can read more about the simulation and simulation modes by hovering over the question mark icon. Another thing you can add to your project is parking. Both surface parking and underground parking is available. To create parking, you click on a plot and then click parking. If we make use of one of the view layer shortcuts I briefly mentioned earlier, we can quickly toggle underground view. Now we can see our underground parking. We can now for example move the parking ramp or change the width and depth of the parking spaces in the properties panel. To go back above ground, we can click the exterior view layer shortcut. There's also a shortcut to view the interior of your buildings. You can also toggle individual elements under the view layer icon. You can for example toggle the context. Now let's talk about importing different files, like DXF, Rhino, etc. I'll first go to the dashboard and create a new project. I'll pick Oslo as the location, and this time I'll choose to not import context. Now that I have a blank project, I'll import a Rhino file. All I need to do is click the import button, select Rhino, find my file, and open it. Now I'll get some options for what units I want to use, which layers I want to import, etc. After importing the Rhino file, I can click on it and then click edit. Now I'll click on the terrain and select to terrain. And I'll also select all the context and turn it into spatio context.
Now I can easily use the imported file as a starting ground for a project. Let's also try importing an image. Click Import, Image, and then select your image of choice. With the image imported, I can click on it, and then select the Scale tool in the black toolbar. I'll make a start and end point, and then input the known dimension. Now I can use the image as a starting point for a project with proper scale. Now that you know how to import files, let's also export something. I'll head back to the Opera House project and click on the export button. Then I'll click IFC, and then I'll hit export. Now let's view the model. Looks great. Spacio also supports exporting a wide variety of file formats. Currently, you can export screenshots, DXF, IFC, BIM, OBJ, Rhino, Spacio, and Excel files. 